this video, we'll be looking at uh, transpiration. So we'll talk about what transpiration is, uh, what's good and what's bad about it, how it actually works, and how it actually enables the water be, to be transported across uh, the plant. So, uh, and then later on we'll also talk about how we can actually estimate the rate of transpiration and what are the factors that will affect it. So imagine here we've got a plant, uh, so we've got a flower with the roots underneath here, and the roots would absorb the water from the soil. And then we've got the leaves here, uh, the xylem going up and into the leaves, and in the leaves we've got different cells. So imagine that these blocks are talking about the cells in the leaves. Transpiration is the loss of water vapour by evaporation through the stomata. Uh, it's worth noting and underlying two words here, which is the word vapour and evaporation. A lot of the times that uh, people will lose marks in the definition of transpiration by saying that transpiration is loss of water. Uh, that is not correct because water vapour is considered to be a gas, whereas water itself is a liquid. So if you say the loss of water, um, that's not correct. It has to be the loss of water vapour by evaporation for the stomata to be the full definition for transpiration. So make sure you uh, make a note of that. There are several different things that this uh, is good for. So first of all, it's kind of, transpiration is kind of like sweating in plants, so it cools the plant down. So by the loss of the water vapour, uh, it's because they absorb the heat uh, and it turns into kinetic energy and they just kind of diffuse across uh, uh, the cells and out of the stomata itself. Another good thing about it is that it actually causes the transpiration stream to, or the transpiration pull. And the transpiration pull is basically the movement of water and mineral ions up the stem uh, of the xylem from the roots. And because of the loss of water vapour here, it will cause that to happen. So imagine if the water vapour originally uh, was in this cell, and it's near the stomata, and because of various reasons, because of, for example, these ones, uh, because it's hot, the water vapour will uh, move out uh, the water move out of the cell, becoming water vapour and diffuse out of the stomata. And because of that, that will cause the uh, water potential here to decrease. And in comparison to this cell here, which has a higher water potential, the water in this cell would then be drawn to the cell that has just lost some water. Now if that happens, that means this cell, originally having a higher water potential, will now have a lower water potential compared to the cell next to it, which has got a higher water potential. And therefore again, the water will then move from this cell to the next because this cell has just, uh, in order to replace that water that has just been lost by the middle cell here. And this kind of carries on and, and happening and, and, to, and until it reaches xylem and it's about that pull of water uh, from the root up the stem uh, through the xylem. So that is the transpiration tree. However, there is a downside to transpiration. Transpiration is about the loss of water vapour by evaporation and that simply means that the plant is losing water. And if the plant is losing water in the terms of a single cell, the cell would lose turgor pressure, meaning that it will become flaccid or even uh, plasmalized. And if it becomes plasmalized for a long time, then the whole plant will start to wilt. Uh, kind of like the leaves will curl up and the whole plant just kind of strengths a little bit and that idea is actually as a protective mechanism is to about trying to uh, reduce the uh, transpiration from happening or reduce the rate of it anyways uh, to stop any further loss of water and if the plant doesn't gain extra water during that time then eventually it will die because of the lack of water to uh, enable the plants to stay upright and to actually do photosynthesis so that is the downside to transpiration. Sometimes we say that transpiration is even a side effect to photosynthesis because when the stomata is open, uh, due to various reasons, uh, the idea about the stomata being open, which is controlled by the guard cells, is so that uh, it's about to enable that carbon dioxide to come into the plant because carbon dioxide is one of the crucial uh, reactants in transpiration. However, when they open, they will also lose water, uh, water vapour and oxygen during that process. It's important to note that for um, water vapour moving out of the stomata, that is considered to be diffusion. I mentioned in another video when the water is not moving across a cell membrane, that is not osmosis because the definition of osmosis uh, is about how the water is moving down the water potential gradient across a partially permeable membrane. So in this case, if it's just simply moving out of stomata, then it's, uh, it's diffusion. 
So when the stomata is open to allow more carbon dioxide to come in for photosynthesis, water and oxygen also escapes. And that is why we say transpiration is a side effect to uh, photosynthesis. Now we will have a look at the uh, actual transpiration stream. So imagine if we zoom into this, into the xylem, so that is my xylem vessel, and we look at the inside of it, we call the water molecules moving across. Whenever the water is moving through the xylem or in the, uh, in the cell wall, uh, by the upper pass pathway, it relies on tension. And actually we say that there are actually two different types of forces that we need to notice here. One of them is talk about the, the hydrogen bond between uh, different water molecules, and that is called cohesion. Keeping in mind that co relates to words like cooperation, etc. So about how different, you know, two people working together. So cohesion is referring to that hydrogen bond between the water molecules that sticks them together. And the other hydrogen bond, which exists between the water molecule and the wall of the xylem itself, like that, is, is called adhesion. So think about adhesion, add, think about adhere. Adhere means to stick to something. So adhesion is talk about the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules and the wall itself. So these two are both the hydrogen bonds that are in the xylem that helps pull the water up. So in, in terms of the basic information about transpiration, just doing a very quick recap before we go into the next step, is transpiration is the loss of water vapor by evaporation through the stomata. And uh, it, it, there are two things that are good about it is that it cools the plant down to avoid any enzymes being denatured and also it can cause a transpiration stream to uh, actually happen to deliver the water and the ions to uh, different parts of the plant. However, that means the plant is also losing water which in an extreme case plant itself can wilt. And the transpiration stream is simply referring to the pull of the water and the ions up the xylem because of the effects of transpiration to replace the water being lost in the cells and leaves. And if we look into the transpiration stream itself in the xylem, then we've got the two different types of hydrogen bonds. One is the uh, cohesion, which is about the hydrogen bonds between the uh, uh, water molecules that stick them together. And adhesion, which is about the hydrogen bond between the water molecules and the wall itself. So this is transpiration. Now we'll have a look at the factors that affect transpiration rate and also how we can estimate it. So first we'll look at the factors that affect transpiration rate. Now we'll say if the transpiration rate increases, it's because of uh, one or a combination of these things, right? So if the temperature increases, uh, then the transpiration rate will also increase. And that is because there is an increase in ki uh, kinetic energy of the water molecules due to the increased uh, th um, thermal energy. Because they're move there is a higher kinetic energy, the water vapor molecules are moving around more, therefore they're more likely to actually move out of the plant through the stomata. If the humidity is low, then the transpiration rate would also increase. So if the environment is quite dry, then there will be more water loss outside because of how steep the uh, water vapor concentration gradient would be. Notice in this case, we don't talk about water potential gradient uh, at all because it's, again, it's not about osmosis, but about diffusion. So even though it's a little bit long, make sure you say water vapor concentration gradient. If there is more air movement, so if it's windy, then again, it will also lead to increase in transpiration rate. I think that's kind of straightforward because if there is a lot of wind outside, then the relative humidity outside the leaf will also drop, therefore maintaining a steep water vapor concentration gradient. So kind of these two points are very much interlinked. Then the last one is about light intensity. If the light intensity is quite high, then the transpiration rate will also increase. And remember I said earlier, because transpiration is kind of like a side effect of photosynthesis. So if light intensity increases, then therefore more stomata will open. So allow more carbon dioxide to come, uh, to come in for more photosynthesis. So again, these are the factors that would affect transpiration rate. Now, the thing is we can actually try to estimate the rate of transpiration. And this is one of the PAGs that you, you will need to know uh, when you do this course. So in order to estimate that, we will use a potometer. Now, the potometer is uh, drawn here. So this is a setup of it. So imagine you've got a capillary tube, kind of like in this particular shape. And then on the capillary tube, you will have a reservoir here, which can uh, basically reset the bubble, air bubble position. 
here and you've got another bit here which uh, it's got the fresh uh, shoot that is being installed there with the airtight gap there as well and you try to get an air bubble into the capillary tube and basically you just put the potometer into different uh, conditions so let's say underneath the sunlight or uh, at a colder or a hotter area or having it with a fan right next to it blowing at the shoot and you basically measure over a certain amount of time uh, how far the air bubble would travel across the ruler and then that would allow you to measure the water uptake by the plant. Now notice that we say that it is an estimation of the transpiration rate, not a measurement. Keeping in mind that the potometer, the, the movement of the air bubble will simply show how much water has been taken up by the, by the chute. And the water can be used in different ways apart from transpiration. So it could be used up uh, in photosynthesis because again, it is one of those reactants in photosynthesis, or it could be used to maintain turgor pressure of uh, various plants uh, cells. So it could be used in these two particular functions and then maybe if you've got excess of it then they might lose it by transpiration. So it is an estimation and not a measurement. Make sure you make, uh, be very careful in terms of the use of words when it comes to answering exam questions. So let's have a look at, at, at this one in a little bit more detail, right? So we are going to let the air bubble travel across and we're going to measure how far the air bubble has traveled in terms of distance, let's say in centimeters. And we use that distance to calculate the volume of water taken up by the plant. So uh, usually people get a bit confused with this question because they would, they don't know how to convert it in, in terms of the, from the length to it, the volume of it. Keeping in mind that the capillary tube itself is a cylinder. So you basically need to calculate the volume of a cylinder. Imagine if we say the air bubble has traveled this much, so that is the distance traveled, and then you need to, uh, the question will probably tell you the radius of the cylinder itself. So basically the volume uptake here is the volume of the cylinder, which is pi r squared times d. So you calculate the uh, area, cross-section area of the circle, pi r squared, times the distance traveled, then you get the volume of water uptake. So in terms of exam questions, uh, I would imagine that they might separate this into, it will be a bigger question into subparts of it. So you might need to think about, uh, they might ask you, how do you calculate the volume of uh, the water uptake? What information you will need? Then you need to be able to say, okay, I need the radius of the capillary tube. They might ask you, why is it an estimation and not a measurement? Then you need to be able to explain that as well. They might even extend it to say, uh, okay, what other factors, apart from the setup as given in the question, would affect the rate of transpiration? Then you need to be able to state these other factors and explain them. Uh, another setup that is quite commonly used in uh, in schools now uh, to replace that particular potometer will be this setup because that potometer actually is quite a difficult setup to 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 use. So actually, most of the time that we use this one, which is simpler. So you've got a beaker uh, which will have the water in it as the reservoir to reset anything if you need to. Then you've got the fresh shoot again attached to it. Then you've got the capillary tube. Uh, and also maybe a third uh, gap here, which will be um, with the syringe, which you can use to reset the water level in the capillary tube. So imagine here, you've got the water level starting here and you set it at a particular uh, condition. Then you basically, again, allow it to just run for a certain amount of time and see how much the water level would drop uh, later on to, let's say, a new level. And that simply would be the volume of water that has been taken up by the plant during that time. It's easier to set up uh, and it doesn't, you don't have to uh, try to get an air bubble in it. The graduated capillary tube will directly tell you the volume taken up by the plant during that time. So again, uh, the quick recap of the second half. So we've got the four different factors that affect the transpiration rate. Make sure you know what these four factors are and also to be able to explain why and how they affect the transpiration rate. Then we talked about the potometer, which is a setup that measures the water uptake by the plant, keeping in mind that it only estimates the transpiration rate and not to measure it. We got, uh, this is a classic setup. You need to be able to calculate the uh, volume of a cylinder in order to calculate the volume of water uptake during that, that point in time. 
and then uh, just so that you know that there are some other setup or methods to set up the potometer which is simpler in terms of when you're doing this experiment however having said that i would assume that most of the time in exams they will use this setup because well they will be able to ask you more questions on it and to specifically test on your math skills and if you remember how to calculate the volume of a cylinder so keep that in mind and that would be the overview of transpiration, how we can estimate it and the factors that will affect its rate.